Hi guys. Uh, in this video, I'll be deriving Coulomb's law from the contravariant or covariant even formulation of Maxwell's equations. Okay, so let's write these things down. Firstly, you're going to need some uh, knowledge of Einstein summation convention. Uh, tensors and uh, well basically special relativity if you know special relativity you should be okay with this okay I'll tell you what these symbols mean in a second This here is the electromagnetic tensor. Now there is a more fundamental uh, version of this equation where I use the uh, electromagnetic potential, but I've just uh, used this instead. It's much more quicker. Okay, and The electromagnetic tensor is anti-symmetric, which you're about to see. It's traceless. Obviously it's a tensor, so, uh, you know. these two here. This is uh, the electric field strength and uh, the vector just goes along here. Here's the negative and this one's a column vector which goes along here and these are divided by C. And then in the uh, these spaces here we have the magnetic fields components. So it's BZ, BY and BX should have them in the right order, I'm not sure. And these, because it's anti-symmetric, these are just the same except negative. Okay, so that's the electromagnetic tensor here. Uh, this is the, uh, it's a four vector, obviously, because this is a tensor equation. Um, and it is the following. C here is the speed of light, and this is. Ah, oh, damn it, I can't remember what that. It's a constant, and um, I think it's the magnetic constant. So this is speed of light, this is charge density here. Um, and now we've got another vector here, and that's uh, current density. Might not be a familiar uh, concept, doesn't really matter right now. Okay. Now, uh, we're going to try and derive Coulomb's uh, force law from this. So, uh, V goes from 0 to 3, so we have three separate equations here. Uh, we'll be only looking at the first one, so V is uh, 0, which uh, is is the time dimension, but that's not really of any importance. So we have the partial of mu, partial mu F 0 mu equals mu zero. Now j zero is c times the charge density. Okay. Now let's just do some summing. So that's the partial of e of x and we're going along this column now. 
so actually we can take this C out and put it here and square it and this here is equal to 1 over the permeability of free space so we just get this here so we have a partial of x you'll probably spot what's happening before I finished partial of y dy so on and so forth and of course it's not hard to see that this is del dot e. So we have del dot e equals charge density over here. Already we're at um, the the differential form of uh, one of the differential equations, uh, differential forms of the Maxwell equations. So how do we get this to um, Coulomb's law? Well, first of all. Um, let's integrate the right hand side here uh, with over a region of space a volume of space in fact so a density times a volume equals a um, whatever that is in that space so we have Q over epsilon and Q is just the amount of charge in this volume specified by this integral. Might m not make it make that much sense right now, but it's true. Okay, now we're going to have to use some fancy mathematics here. Uh, del dot e equals. <coughs> Now, Gauss came up with a nice thing called the divergence theorem, which basically says this here equals the surface integral of this, and this is a surface integral, and it's a closed surface integral. So, uh, the, div the divergence integrated all over the, uh, the, the divergence integrated all, o all um, over all the volume. Doesn't make much sense that sentence over all the volume. Oh, anyway, um, equals the s the uh, vector uh, dotted with all over the area of the surface. So if I had a sphere, which is what we'll be doing in a second, that's a sphere. Um, if I add up all the divergence inside, it's equal to the fields coming out integrated over all of the area. Okay, so we now have the integral form of this equation okay so are we getting close now sorry I should cut that bit off um, so presume, think about it, there's a charge in the middle of this sphere. It doesn't matter if the charge is a point charge or a as big as the sphere. Um, the sphere is of radius r and we want to know um, what is at the surface of this sphere because that will give us in turn the radial uh, equation if you know what I mean which is basically Coulomb's law. So, because um, we have spherical symmetry here, we know that at the top the uh, field is going to be pointing up 
at the bottom of the sphere, the field is going to be pointing down. The side of the sphere, it's all pointing and it's a normal to the sphere. Because it's a normal to a sphere, we know that in all these, in all the area which we're going to be integrating over, E dot DA is just equal to E times DA. Because um, the Hold on. Because the because the angle is ninety degrees, basically. Because these are normals, the dot product of them is just their magnitudes times together. Right, so if we use this, we now know. Hold on, this is a surface integral. That e. over the integral of the surface dA equals Q over epsilon naught. Okay, what's the surface integral of dA of a sphere of radius r? Well, it's just uh, 4 pi r squared. So now we can rearrange this to get E equals Q over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared. Okay. Hope you've enjoyed it. I'll be deriving some more of Maxwell's equations um, perhaps later. Thanks for watching. Also, post your requests for anything, uh, anything physics related you'd like to be explained in kind of a mathematical way like this.